entitled this message, Prepare Thyself. It's about preparation, okay? It's about preparation for the coming of the Lord. How many know that Jesus is coming back quick and coming back soon, amen? As I was meditating on what I was going to bring, you know, I started thinking about how we prepare ourselves for different things. If you notice, uh, people are always preparing themselves, always, for something or another. Uh, when we're in high school, we're pre we, they pre prepare us or they should prepare us for college, right? And, and the college should prepare us for life. A lot of times that doesn't happen, um, especially nowadays. It's not happening. Uh, they're not preparing the kids for what's out there. Amen? And during our lifetime, we prepare, I mean, day in and day out, we prepare for different things. We prepare for work, you know, the day before. Um, as I'm bringing this message, I prepared for it. Uh, I, you know, uh, we're always preparing for something. Sadly, we don't prepare spiritually. Okay? All this is temporary. The word, the word of God declares that everything we see is temporal. Everything we see one of these days is not going to be here no more. This building, right? Us. All this is temporary. The Bible declares that our life is as a mist, as a fog. One day we're here, tomorrow we're not. Right? And it's sad that, you know, education, as I mentioned before, is awesome, it's great. If you have an opportunity to, to get educated or educated, like I say, by all means do it. Right? Uh, having a career, beautiful, great. I mean, you know, I, I, I thank the Lord that, I, that I got the, uh, I'm in the career that I, that I wanted as a kid. I'm living the dream. <laughs> so they say, right? But you soon realize that it wasn't all you, you, you expected it to be. You know? But it's still a blessing, though. And I still thank God for the career path he put me on. However... You know, even that, from I think back at my career, I mean, I was preparing back in high school for my career. Back in, as a freshman in high school, I remember I, I knew what I wanted to do. And I was preparing for it even back then. So I prepared for years, you can say, to where I'm at and the physical. However, again, when it comes to the things of, of the spirit, brothers, how much time do we put into it? I mean, let's be realistic. Let's be real. Think back. How much time do you devote to your spiritual life? It's sad, right? It's sad that we all fell. Every single one of us fails in one area or another to prepare for the coming of the Lord. Benjamin Franklin said that by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Isn't that true? And again, I'm talking about spiritual things, about the coming of the Lord. Because we prepare physically. We prepare every day. You know, there's even people called preppers. Have you heard of preppers? They're, they're preparing for doomsday, right? And they have all kinds of underground uh, <laughs> bunks, bunkers and, and, and castles and, I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. As I mentioned, Jesus is coming back quick. In Revelation 22, 12, as we begin... Revelation 22, 12, the word declares, Behold, I come quickly. That means without delay. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Notice that. Now, salvation is not by works, right? We know that. We know that salvation is a free gift from God to us. However, how many of you know that salvation... It's not the end. It's just the beginning. Amen? It's just the beginning, brothers. We have a part in the kingdom of God. God did not create robots. He wants a relationship with us. A relationship is a two-way street. We have a part in this. And let me show you uh, something here. In Revelation 19.7, Revelation 19.7, the word declares, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. And I want, you to, I want you to catch this. His wife, right, had made herself ready. Notice that. His wife, the church, the ecclesia, right, has made her, had made herself ready. What does that show you? That she had a part in it. 
She had a part, right, in her righteousness. Not that we become righteous by our works. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand it. We are made righteous by the blood of Christ and only by the blood of Christ. But we work out our salvation, amen, and we, we, we become obedient to his word. You see, we're not just listeners of his word, but we're doers of his word. See, if the Lord tells me, I want you to go across town and I want you to deliver a message to this house, we will do it. See this, but I don't know them, Lord. I've, I don't even, I don't know them. I don't even know, I'm not from here. Did I ask to go? What part of go do you not understand? I want you to speak to them about, but Lord, you remember that? And, and, and we're not alone. We know uh, Moses tried that, right? But Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not eloquent. You know? That's part of preparing, being obedient. And Revelation 3.11, the word declares, I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have so that no one will take your crown. How many know that the crowns that we're, we're uh, earning that we're going to receive because of our obedience here on earth, because of our obedience now, how many know that those crowns are not for us? There's five crowns, and that's another study, but these crowns are for Jesus. So we can present to him when he comes for us, and we lay down at his feet. You see? How sad is, is it going to be that day when when, when, when he comes and, and we're, we're up there in glory and, and we have nothing to give him. Because all we did was just sit and be just listeners or just hearers of the word, but not doers of the word. How many know that salvation is a choice? The Lord calls you. Salvation belongs to the Lord. The Lord calls you. The Lord uh, is the one wooing you by the Holy Spirit. Okay? But we all have a choice in it. And again, he's not creating robots. He wants that relationship. But those that belong to him must continue, must maintain. Those that don't have a choice. Today's the day of salvation. Let's, let's read a parable. I'm, I want to read a parable to you. And, and I'm going to read it in context and then we'll dissect it a little, okay? But I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew. We're going to speak about two different type of people um, in this passage here. Matthew 25, we're going, to, we're going to start in verse 1. Okay? And we, we've all heard of this parable. We've all heard it before. But how many of you know that the Word of God is alive? Amen? He, he has something new for us every day. Are we listening to the Holy Spirit? Okay? So don't ever say, well, I already heard that one yesterday. No. God has something new every day for you. You know, remember the pastor has been speaking about fresh manna? He has manna for us every day. Daily bread, amen? Lord, give me your daily bread. Okay, so Matthew 25, the word declares in verse 1. I'm going to read all the way through 13, so just follow along. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Or gone out, I'm sorry. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go, rather, to those who sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, notice that, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. 
Blessed be his word. So, let's dissect this. Let's go to Matthew 25, 1. The kingdom of heaven shall be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. How many know that there's two types of people in a church, in a church building? There's a saved and the unsaved, right? The born again and, and the ones that are not born again. The Bible calls them the sheep and the goats, right? The wheat and the tare. Here we have five that are wise and five virgins that were foolish. Notice that in Romans 9, 6, the word of God declares, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. In 2 Corinthians 13, 5, the word declares, examine yourselves, whether you are in the faith, test yourselves. In other words, is there fruit in your life? Um, notice what our Lord declared to Israel. Eight, not all Israel is Israel. Uh, just because you say you are the son of Abraham does not give you a free ticket to heaven. Same thing with us. Because we say we're Christians, uh, because we said a prayer, or because somebody said we're, my grandma told me I'm a Christian because she was a Christian, that's not the way it works. We must examine our hearts, every, every single one of us. If we're in the faith, amen. If we're not, you know, I mean, you know, you'll know. Lamentations 3.40, the word declares, let us examine and probe our ways. Let us return to the Lord. In other words, you see that you are not born again, or, or you see that you have gone astray, come back. Come back to the Lord. When the Lord comes, and he comes for his people, I, I want you to understand one thing. This, this is talking about the second coming. Now, there's nothing that has to happen prophetically, brothers. Nothing that has to happen prophetically for the rapture to happen. Okay? The rapture is the gathering of the saints. The dead in Christ will rise first, and then us who are alive will be caught up in the air. Okay? One day, two people will be out in the field. One will stay back, and one will leave. Just, just like Enoch did. And, and uh, Elijah. Elijah. We're going to be raptured up, those that are alive, right? Uh, again, we're going to meet those that are already passed away, that are in Christ, up in the air. And the twinkling, twinkling, twinkling of an eye, of the eye. Um, but I want you to notice one thing. At that moment, there's not going to be time for you to go and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, forgive me. Lord, you know, it's, it's got to be... That's why the Bible declares today is a day of salvation. If you feel that tug of the Holy Spirit, if you feel that, that you know, that that's the Lord calling you. Salvation can only come by repentance. Repentance is turning from the, our, our old lifestyle, what, what we used to do, right? Uh, our sins and turning back towards God. Notice that as we continue in verse 2, Notice the wise virgins. Matthew 25, 2. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Okay? Notice that before they all looked the same, right? The, the ten virgins, they all looked the same. They all had a lamp. But there is something different about those wise virgins. What was it? Verse 3. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They were not prepared. The wise, verse 4, took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Notice that. Now, you know, Bible teachers will go back and forth. Commentators will go back and forth about what the oil represents. You know, uh, some have said it's the Holy Spirit. Some have said it's salvation. Some have said it's good works. Well, obviously it's not good works because we're not born again by good works. What I, you know, as I was praying and, and asking the Lord, you know, what is, this, what is it about this verse? What is it, Lord? Notice that five were obedient. Five were ready for the Lord. Five were ready for the bridegroom to come. They were not doing their own thing. You know, the, the five that were, were uh, uh, wicked or foolish, they did their own thing, brothers. They, they, they refused to 
go and prepare themselves ahead of time. They, they refuse to go out and buy that oil ahead of time. You know, notice uh, as we continue, notice that uh, the wise told the, the, you know, the foolish, go and buy that oil. Where is it that we get that oil? It is through the saints of old. It is through that, you know, through who brought that message to you? Who brought that message of the cross to you? Those are the people that sold you that oil. In other words, salvation, right? The Holy Spirit in us. Once we receive salvation, the Holy Spirit comes in us. So the Lord says, I will, I'm sorry, Psalms 32, 8, the word declares, the Lord says, I will make you wise and show you where to go. I will guide you and watch over you. Verse 9, so don't be like a horse or donkey that doesn't understand. They, mu they must be led with bits and reins or they will not come near you. The Lord promised that he would give us the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's found in Ezekiel 36 where he promised us a new heart. A lot of times what happens is uh, people want to serve the Lord. They want to be uh, Christians or they want to be saved, but they try to do it by their own works, right? And, and they come in and, and, and they become religious brothers. There's denominations that if, you know, if you're not baptized, you're not born again. Uh, there's some people that say, well, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not born again. You know, all these uh, requirements. How many know that something plus Jesus is not of Jesus? If you need salvation, something, uh, Jesus plus something else, that is not salvation. That is not, uh, that is a false uh, doctrine. Okay? Did the Lord call us to baptize? Yes, of course. We baptize because we want to participate, right? We want to be part, we want to be obedient. Uh, we part just like we put participate in communion. Uh, speaking in tongues, yes, it's real. Yes, it does happen. Yes, yes, it's of the Lord. But it's not a requirement unto salvation. You see this. So, God promised us a new heart. And Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take away your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Notice what is said on, in the book of Psalms. Don't be like the donkey, right? Don't be like the horse. The donkey and the horse, you have to put reins in them. If not, they won't go wherever you want them to go, right? Us without the Holy Spirit, brothers, I mean, we can, call, we can be religious. You know, maybe we were there at one time, okay? I know I was. You know, with religion... You look like a Christian. You might sound like a Christian, but, you know, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you're not a Christian. Um, you're not born again. You're not a child of God. It is the Holy Spirit that makes us born again, you know. Right here, without the Spirit of God, brothers, we will not please our Lord. We will not be able to please our Lord. We can try all we want, but we will not please our Lord. Uh, there will be no fruit in your life. There will be works, but no fruit of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.13 says, If you live according to the flesh, you will die by the flesh. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deads of the body. You will live. For all, you who, uh, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Isn't that what our pastor has been preaching? For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Notice that. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. If not, it's just religion. And religion will not save us. There's many religious people that are going to end up in hell. Because they thought somebody lied to them that they were born again. You know, I don't say this to, to, to be legalistic or anything like that, but uh, the, the, the reason I bring this message, one, I want to be obedient, but two, is because I don't want no one to go to hell. Nobody. You know, and, and I've said this before, but a lot of times we miss heaven by six inches, right? You know, because we said a confession by the mouth, but not from the heart. See, 
Being born again is by the heart. We surrender our will, we surrender our heart. Because lip service is, is, does you no good, brothers. So, while the, uh, I'm sorry, verse 5, Matthew 25, verse 5. While the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Notice this talking about the, the ten virgins again. They were all sleeping, right? Right now, believe it or not, the church is in a state of sleep. We're all sleeping, all of us. We don't realize who we are in Christ. Uh, there's going to come a time when even our eyes are going to be unveiled. And we're going to realize who we were. And we're going to realize that we missed it. We missed walking in his authority and his power. We were saved for a, for a purpose. You know, we were saved one to declare the gospel. All of us, every single one of us in this building was saved to declare the gospel. As you declare the gospel, brothers, as you take the gospel to the people, signs will follow. We don't have to go after the signs. A lot of times what has happened is the church has been following the signs. You see that? Instead of following their Messiah, instead of following the Spirit. Remember what we just read. If you are led by the flesh, what happens? Death. Death. Walking, uh, being religious is walking in the flesh. You see that? We try to muster up things. We try to do things by ourselves. When you walk in the Spirit, it automatically it's going to happen. Because it's not us. It's Him in us. Through us. All we have to do is show up, brothers and sisters. Look at Paul. Look at Peter. All they did was show up. And, and they showed up and they were obedient. The Lord tell them, I want you to place your hands on him. They would place their hands on him. That person would be delivered. They did not muster it up. They did not try to, 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 to do all this crazy stuff. It happens. When you hear his voice and you obey, blessings happen. Blessings happen in the church and to the church through you. You see that? And God wants to use you in that manner. You know, I'm not talking about that crazy stuff that you see on TV because a lot of that stuff is not real. Now, God will move because he's merciful. He is merciful. You know, I've seen where people have been delivered, delivered through a, not through a false prophet, but in, in, a, in a certain conference, right? But because that person reached out to God. You see that? Again, it's all about the heart. You can be in this, in this uh, church building, and as I'm ministering the word, you're seeking after God. You're going to receive from God. It's not about the speaker. I'm just an instrument. Okay? I'm just an instrument, but it's up to you to receive from him. It's up to you. Ask him, Lord, reveal to me your word. Reveal to me who you are. Lord, fill me full of your Holy Spirit. So I can go back and proclaim to my family, to, to my friends, to my coworkers. So, because God wants to deliver people through you. God wants to heal people through you. Through the church. We are his arms. We are his feet. But we're not walking. And we're not being obedient. So, they all slumbered and slept. We are living in the end of times. Whether it's going to take one more week. One more day, one more year, 10 years, we don't know. Okay, but we are living in the end of times. It could be another 20 years. None of us know, but we have to be ready. In 2 Peter 3, 3, the word declares that, Know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust. Notice that. They're following after the flesh. They are following after the lust. That's why... They, they can't believe. They don't believe the word of God. They don't believe uh, uh, that the Lord moves nowadays. As a matter of fact, they make fun of you. They make fun of the church. Why? Because they can't see. They are not spiritually discerned. 
Now, verse 4, 2 Peter 3, 4 says, and they're going to say, where is the promise of his coming? Where is it? You keep saying that Jesus is coming. Where is it? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. Now, I, I want to I show you something that the Lord showed me that I hadn't seen it. Right there where it says, verse 4, where it says, these people was, are saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep. Notice that. What does that tell you? This, this is not the world. A lot, a lot of times we think that the world is going to be mocking us, which they do. But these are religious people. These are people within the church. Notice that. It says, ever since our fathers. What does that tell you? They proclaim to be Israel. They proclaim to be Christians. So, 2 Peter 3, it says, Do not forget this one thing, this one thing, that the Lord, with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some have counted slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Notice that. The reason the Lord tarries is because he wants everybody to be saved. He wants to give everybody an opportunity. And he has given everybody an opportunity. The, 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 now through the internet and, and through all these uh, all this other uh, means, te- uh, you know, t- the way technology is nowadays, everybody has heard the gospel. Or everybody's at the point of almost hearing the gospel. There might be a few people out there in the jungle that haven't heard of it. But for the most part, especially here in the United States, we are without excuse. Right? We're without excuse. All of us have heard the gospel. All of us have heard that Jesus is coming back soon. I mean, some of us have been hearing it since we were this high, right? But remember... To him, one day is a thousand years. You see, a lot of people make the mistake and they think of God as, as being one of us. In other words, they think that he, God is in, inside time. God is outside of time. He's eternal. You see that? He's outside of time. He's already in eternity. He is eternal. So his coming is quick. Let's continue with verse 6. Uh, Matthew 25, verse 6, it says, At midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him at midnight. Will we be ready? You know that as Christians, we should be expectant. We should be ready. The Lord is coming at a time when we least expect it. Okay? When we least expect it. And Luke I'm sorry, in Matthew 24, 37, the word declares, As the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of before the flood, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving to marriage. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son, I'm, I'm sorry, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. How was the days of Noah? Well, first of all, Noah preached for 100 years. Okay? While he was building the ark, while him and his sons were building the ark, he was warning the people. He was warning them. And that day that, that, he, that they thought was never coming came. What were the people doing? What does the Bible say they were doing? They were eating is eating bad? They were drinking. They were marrying and giving into marriage. In other words, it was a normal day. It was an everyday, average day when, when, when the Lord came the first time. In other words, when, when the, the flood happened. And Noah warned them and warned them and warned them to repent, to turn. But they didn't. So God warns us as a loving father, warns his children. You know that? It's not a threat. It's not, oh, he's coming. No, we should be looking forward to his coming. 
And that's why we should get ready, because we love him, not because we're religious and because the pastor told me that I got to be righteous and holy. Oh, I can't watch that because the pastor told me. No. I don't want to watch that trash because it's trash. See that? I don't want to go to that place no more because I don't, I'm not part of that no more. It's not because they force me. If somebody try, has to force you, brother or sister, examine your hearts. You might not be born again. If somebody has to force you to church, force you to read the Bible, force you to pray, force you to be ready, it's a blink, it's a warning light. God loves you, believe it or not, unconditionally. And he's warning you in love. Because he doesn't want you to be left behind. It's coming. You know, the sad part about living, well, it's, it's sad, but it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's sad because in the times that we live in, because everything's available. Very easy. I mean, you know, uh, you want to see a movie about the rapture? It's, pu- you know, push a couple of buttons and you can find it. It, leaves, it almost leaves nothing to the imagination. <laughs> you know, I remember uh, when, when I was a little kid, I went to, to a to church with my grandma. And um, it was one of those tent revivals. It was a big old tent. And, and I was, uh, man, I used to love those. You know, the, the open air and just preacher, fire and brimstone preaching. And it just reminds me, right? One, they had a movie one time about dying and going to hell. And I remember as a kid, when I saw it, I mean, that, the devil was in it and everything. You know, the people were dying. It was kind of like a, a play, but it was, a, it was on the screen, an pr- old projector. But anyways, it scared me so much. I was a little kid. I was like maybe, I don't know, six, seven. But I remember it. To the point where I said, Lord, I don't want to stay behind. <laughs> I want to go home with you. I want to be born again. But it wasn't a, a scared of, of, of fear. It was a scared of, no, I don't want to stay back. So I say that to bring you here at the midnight hour. Luke twelve thirty five. the word declares, be dressed in readiness. Notice that. Keep your lamps lit. Be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so that they may immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Notice that. You want to be ready. Blessed are those whom the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them. Whether he comes in the second watch or even the third watch and finds them. So, blessed are those. We got to be ready, brothers. We got to be ready for his coming. You know that as Christians, we shouldn't be caught off guard. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1, the word declares, Concerning the times and seasons, brother, you have no need that, you, uh, that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when we say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon you as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Verse 4, But you, brothers, you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Notice that, brothers. His second coming should not catch us like a thief would catch us. You know, we don't know when the th- if a thief is going to come or, you know, when he's going to come. We don't know. A thief just goes and, and robs you, when you least expect it. However, we as Christians should not be caught off guard. Why not? Well, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, the Bible says that he reveals to us the heart of God. Right? Just like we know that, 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 that summer is coming during springtime, we know. Once we see spring, we know, oh, summer's next. We should also be able to tell the signs of time. Look around you. Look at everything that's going on in the world. Things are happening that had never happened before. And they're happening like this. I mean, just look at Israel. Israel is our time clock. Everything that's happening in Israel, notice it's pointing towards the return of our Lord. 
You know, there's talk about our, uh, the third temple being built already. It's going to start being built. When that happens, watch. Because, and the reason I say that is because in order for the Antichrist to reveal himself, the temple has to be built. The temple is not built right now. Israel is not offering sacrifices. Ever since Jesus, 2,000 years ago, when, they, when that second temple was destroyed, Israel has not had a sacrifice. Once the third, this third temple is built, brothers, they're going to establish the sacrifice again. However, like I mentioned, nothing needs to happen prophetically for the Lord to come. Everything's in place. You see that? Israel's a nation. They have their Hebrew language, original Hebrew language, that they didn't have before. They weren't a people. Now they are a people. Right? And, and not only that, but look at everything in Israel. Like I mentioned, the Sanhedrin's in place. You know, the 70 elders. The, the red heifers in place. All the instruments, have, they have them, except for the Ark, covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. Covenant of the Ark. Ark of the covenant. That's what happens when you speak Spanish and English. <laughs> you try to reverse things. But anyways... Um, nothing needs to happen, brother. We shouldn't be left in darkness. We shouldn't be caught in darkness. Amen? So, Luke 21, 34, the word declares, Take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. Notice that. In other words, don't be part of the world. You know, you might say, well, brother, I'm not out there drinking. Brother, I'm not out there partying because that's what, that's what carousing is. Being crazy, drunk, out, being out there, you know, doing the things of the world. However, this is a huge one for the church, the cares of this life. If anything will keep you back, will be the cares of this life. Why? Why do you say that, brother? Is it not right for me to worry about, you know, my, my family? No, listen, whatever you put in front of God, that is your God. If you worry more than what you praise or worship, then guess what? Worrying is your God. If you spend more time behind a TV than you do, and, I, you know, again, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying for you to be religious. And, and again, I, you know, if somebody has to force you, then there's something wrong. You know, we as Christians should desire the Word of God. We as His children should desire our Abba Father. And we should desire His presence more than anything, more than life itself, more than the air we breathe. We should really desire it. If you don't, and, and you, have, you are born again, ask Him for that spirit. I mean, ask Him for that fire in you. Ask Him for Him to refresh you. Ask Him, Lord, I want your presence. I want you, Lord. Because coming to church alone is not enough. I mean, amen. Amen that you make it on Sundays. Amen that you make it on Wednesdays. Because not everybody makes it on Wednesdays. So you're one step ahead. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you're one step ahead of the other guys. No. But brothers and sisters, you know, uh, you know, I know the pastor has mentioned it many times, but we are blessed. We are blessed as a people to come and congregate together and, and speak about our awesome God, right? And, and hear from him. I mean, you know, you might get a, 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 an instrument that's a little bit rough around the edges like here, but you know what? He loves you. And he'll get the message right, you know, using that instrument. I mean, the Bible says he uses a foolish thing, so I'm a perfect example of that. Amen? <laughs> he loves you. He loves you with a passion. Uh, verse 7, as I close. Um, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Notice that. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Right? Um, but the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go, rather, and uh, to those who sell and buy for yourselves. So then, Philippians 2.12 says, Beloved, even as you have always obeyed, and not only in my presence, but now much more in your absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I mean, you know that our salvation 
uh, we're responsible for our own salvation. You know, uh, my wife cannot be born again because I'm born again. My children, when they come to the age of accountability, cannot be born again because I'm a Christian or because I'm a minister or because, you know, because of this or that. Because I'm a member of so-and-so. Uh, salvation is a personal choice. It's a personal, it's a personal responsibility. These foolish virgins thought that they could borrow the oil from the wise ones. The wise ones prepared. They prepared. They said, you know what? The bridegroom coming. We got to get ready. We got to have our, our lamps full. So when he comes, yeah, we can take a nap. But when he comes, we're ready. We'll wake up and we'll, we're ready to rock and roll. Well, not rock and roll, but we're ready to go, right? Now the foolish said, you know what? Yeah, man, we got plenty of time. I'm just going to take a little nap. It's already midnight anyway. He's not coming. And we'll, we'll buy the oil when he comes back. A lot of people say, you know what? I'm too young to be born again. You know, one time I heard a 67, 67-year-old <laughs> say, I'm too young to, uh, be, to, to be born again. Oh, well, okay. But uh, you hear that, you know. Oh, not right now. I'm having too much fun. I'm making too much money. You know, and, and it's sad because they don't realize what salvation really is. You know, they, 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 they think it's a burden. They think, well, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do that no more. I'm not going to be able to, you know, party. And believe me, there, nothing compares. Nothing compares to being born again, to having a relationship with our Lord. Amen? So, it is your own responsibility. Uh, working out your own salvation is your own responsibility. We can give you the tools as, as ministers, as a pastor uh, does. He can give you uh, the, the word of that day, but it's up to us not only to hear it, but to do it. Right? It's up to us. Uh, as we continue in verse 10, uh, while they went to buy, the bride, bridegroom came, right? They went to go buy it, and guess who came? The bridegroom. Those who were ready went in with him. Those who, who came, the door was shut. It was too late. And uh, what, what did they In verse 13, they said, uh, I'm sorry, verse 12 says, But he answered and said to them, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. In Matthew 7, 21, the word declares, Everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does a will, notice that, only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That's why it's, it's important to examine our lives, you know. If we're born again, amen, amen. That is, you know, as the word declares, you know, uh, you know, remember when uh, the disciples came to the Lord and they were, hap they were, they were happy because, hey, Lord, even the demons uh, submitted to us. And, and Lord, we did all this. What did, what did our Lord Jesus tell them? He says, don't rejoice at the demons. You know, the devil submit to you, to, to the authority I have placed on you. You know, don't rejoice because... Uh, the, the sick were healed, uh, you know, the dead were, you know, arose. But be glad that your name is written in the last book of life. You see that? Our Lord said that. Again, we go back to don't follow the signs and wonders. Those will come. You know, don't get disappointed. By all means, you know, pray for it, but seek the Father. When you seek the Father with all your heart, this will happen. People will get healed. People will get delivered. Why? Because we are seeking Him. We are seeking His heart. We are not going after uh, uh, temporal things. Amen? So, Hebrews 10.36 says, You need to persevere 
so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he promised. What has he promised? For in just a little time, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one that shrinks back, the one that backslides. But we do not belong to those who shrink back. In other words, backslide. We are destroyed, uh, and are destroyed, I'm sorry. But to those, right, to those who have faith and are saved. Amen? Be diligent. Looking forward to these things, to his coming. Peter's, uh, Second Peter says, uh, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Notice that. To be found without spot and blameless. In other words, it's up to us. Again, we don't make ourselves holy or righteous. We are holy and righteous because of his blood. But we continue in that relationship. We continue seeking after Jesus, right? Through prayer and, and through the reading of the scripture and through fellowshipping and, and through seeking him in all these things. We, how will you make yourself ready, brothers and sisters, for the coming of the Lord? Very simple. By being ready every day. That's it. You know, notice that those faithful workers, that faithful worker was ready for his master. They were ready. They didn't get ready. They didn't say, okay, well, you know, it's been a while now. Now we can stop partying. And he's, no. They said, you know what? I love my master. So I'm going to, you know, be a faithful servant. And I'm going to keep his house clean. And I'm going to love his serv other servants. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be faithful in what he has placed me, what he has placed under me. Same thing with us. Be faithful where you're at and continue to seek him with all your heart. Amen? The enemy's a liar, brothers. He tries to make us, makes us uh, keep our eyes on something else, whether it's the problems of this world. As I mentioned earlier, maybe uh, religion. Don't fall into that trap. Love him with all your heart. Amen? And you'll be ready. Trust me. 